Thanks so much for joining this lightning lesson. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, I've shared a link um, to this file and, um, and today's session will cover how to create a smoother uh, designer to developer handoff. So we'll go ahead and click on the handoff playground and we'll go through this file. So first things first, what does a ha good handoff even look like? How do we know that we've um, handed our designs off to uh, development and things are smooth? First thing, uh, and these are things that I noticed while I was going through uh, you know, my own experience. The first thing, there's little or no questions about where things are. Um, developers uh, seem to be able to find your designs uh, and there's no questions uh, around the placement of things or how to find things. Um, so that is definitely a good sign of a good handoff. The second thing is little to no UI issues come up in testing. Now, of course, this is much easier said than done, and it's not always um, this easy, but uh, and things might come up. Uh, but again, the closer you get to having no uh, issues come up with the uh, UI side of things, um, then we know that we've uh, done a good, uh, good job handing off our designs to development. And lastly, uh, interactions are and flows are as expected. There's no surprises, um, and as uh, you know, we're reviewing our designs um, after it's been developed. Uh, we're not really surprised around an interaction that's broken or missing, uh, and so things are as expected. Now, how do we actually deliver uh, a good handoff? Well, there's a there's a few th uh, things that uh, you need to keep in mind, and to showcase that I've prepared a few examples here. Uh, and the first one's going to be around component states. So uh, in, in the Figma Fast Track course that I teach uh, here on Maven, um, we go through designing this um, app together uh, where people can actually book items um, out on a daily basis. Um, and these items are luxury accessories like this uh, Rolex at Daytona here. So this is where we put together a prototype for this app. Users can actually go through the sign up flow and browse items. And whenever they see an item they like, they can read more information, see the pickup location, reviews, choose to book the item and uh, pick the dates that they want to actually rent out this item. And all the fields here are dynamically generated using variables. So we've created an advanced prototype over here. And this is the page that we're working on right now that um, I'm showcasing here. So this is the confirmation screen when a user books an item. Now, as a developer, if I'm handed off something like this, um, I'll definitely have a lot of assumptions to make. Uh, you know, while this seems complete uh, from a design uh, perspective, uh, there's certainly things missing from it. First things first. Um, I might miss this GIF uh, that's playing in the background showing this little confetti animation. Uh, that's something that could definitely go missing if I'm just handed off this design. Another one is what about the buttons? Um, there's no press interaction. I'll probably you know, not code in any interaction when the button's being pressed. And so that, that's something that could go missing here. And what about any interaction on the Hangs Swap logo? That, that's some, definitely something that could go missing as well. Um, if users are not sure uh, or the developers not sure if they should link the hang swap logo to any page of the app um, but maybe we wanted to link to the home page for example and so that that, that would definitely go missing um, if I were the developer and looking at this and the other thing is unsure where the buttons would take me um, you know we have open in Apple Maps open in Google Maps done which again I'm going to presume will close the screen and go back to the previous one but that might not be true so these are things that are missing from this design. So let's fix this by adding a few things. Now, all these uh, notes that I've added are as annotations inside of uh, the dev mode that Figma gives you access to. So you can switch on the dev mode and leave notes around your design uh, using this annotate tool over here. So, um, or you can hit shift T on your keyboard and just click on anything and leave a note. And that's what I've done here. Now, uh, I've selected the hang swap uh, text here, explained that clicking hang swap should take you back to the home screen slash item listings page. So that's clear to the developer now. There's a GIF playing in the background. Please try this in prototype mode to see what it looks like. Um, and I've annotated the fill as well, just to emphasize that. 
take users to pick up location allow, uh, above opened in Apple Maps. So now there's descriptions on what the buttons should do. Um, and these are all left through the dev mode um, annotation. And also for the buttons, uh, I've displayed the press dates down here. Now, if you're using a design system and you have a design library, um, ideally it will be easy enough to find um, and you need to communicate that to developers on how to find the different states for your buttons. So you don't necessarily need to have every button's you know, states um, right below the page. Uh, I'm just displaying that here uh, for this uh, lecture here. Um, and I've even gone ahead and created a user flow. So showing the done will actually take me back to the home page here. And on the home page, we also have um, annotations sure enough as well. Um, another couple of things that could go missing from this page uh, would be the nav bar and, and also this like filter and sort button down here that might, uh, you know, move around with the design. But what we want is a fixed state. So I've left annotations that this should be fixed and also the nav bar at the top. So as the user scrolls, they, uh, those, those two elements won't move. Uh, they'll be fixed on the screen. And so these are things that developers might, um, you know, not think about uh, because they're focused on, you know, executing the designs in front of them. Um, and so if you leave it up to them to make assumptions, you might not always get what you want as a designer. So those are the few things uh, through um, delivering some, um, you know, annotations in your designs. Now, if you don't want to use annotations, by the way, um, you can leave comments, you can add text on your design, uh, like I've done so, for example, here. Um, you don't necessarily need to use dev mode. I know that there, there's a plan to use it. Uh, you need to have like a paid plan. If you don't want to use it, no problem. There's uh, al alternatives as well as probably other plugins that you can look into uh, for delivering the same outcome. Now let's cover um, some frame slash page states. You know, we covered um, what does it look like um, for uh, leaving annotations for different interactions on your designs. But what about the different states that the page itself could have? Uh, and so uh, given a page like this, again, the same item uh, detail or, or the item listings page that we have up there, I've displayed it down here, uh, looks great. But the problem is that um, as a developer, I'm going to make a few assumptions. Um, and the, the first one is if there's no items, I'll probably show an empty page like this with just no items listed and not really any context or anything the user can do from here. For my loading state, um, you know, a lot of developers are using libraries and they might pull, um, you know, a loading spinner, something like this um, to show that the page is loading, not the best UX. So this is something that we probably want to um, customize and create designs for as part of our states. And lastly, for like things like error states, you know, something went wrong, um, we want to display that. This right here, maybe it works, but it's not clear enough on uh, what went wrong and also what the user could do to maybe solve that issue. Um, and if we're, we could show some items still, um, you know, we probably want to show those items regardless. So now let's fix that. How do we come up with, uh, you know, uh, customized uh, states for the empty loading and error state here. So I've gone ahead and created custom designs. So for an empty state, we have this nice little graphic now and some more text around, you know, what they could do, the user could do to maybe see more items. So uh, try applying different filters or changing your search to see items. So now we've added some tips around what they can do. For the loading state, we, we have this loading skeleton type of um, state here. So if you actually run this in uh, prototype mode it has a little animation and of course developers might miss that so that's why there's a little annotation up here that I left uh, and you can see loading state has an animation please run it in prototype mode to see it so in case they miss that part uh, or they don't run this in prototype that annotation helps them um, get there and then for our error state uh, I've created a little um, box over here to display you know, the same message, whoops, something went wrong, but maybe more descriptive text around what that error is uh, and something user-friendly, of course, uh, and then allowing them to refresh the page um, if possible to get, um, you know, results or try to resolve that uh, error, uh, whatever may have happened. 
So now we have all four states. We've provided the filled state, which is the happy path, what the users uh, could expect to see. And then in case there's no items, in case the page is loading, which it certainly will at some point, um, and then the error state, if something goes wrong, what do we show to users? These are pages that could often go missing in the design handoff. And you'll end up with pages like this. And as a designer, you probably won't want these. So those are things to um, definitely include in your handoff, those different states for your frames. Another example here is things like, um, such as as simple as placeholder um, text uh, and things like that in, in input. Uh, you know, I've, I've handed off my designs numerous times where developers actually use the same color of the placeholder as the filled state of my components. Um, so this having the, all the states covered also extends to things like um, inputs and buttons uh, and so on. And so, you know, we definitely want to also cover uh, a page. Uh, you know, this is the empty state, but also a filled state to show some sample uh, information in here and what that would look like. Uh, and this um, clearly shows that, you know, it's, the, the colors are different. And uh, you can also see in annotation, um, I've used the uh, annotation for the expiry date because uh, that could be an assumption that I can make as a developer is for the expiry date, I might not know what type of input to open. Um, so no, I specifically outlined that here we want to use number input uh, and not pickers. Or if you want to use pickers, then you can definitely highlight that here and show all the different um, states that your picker can have so that again, you're not leaving it up to assumptions for developers to make. Um, if you're keen on having those uh, design pieces all organized and uh, you know familiar to the user, because otherwise, again, developers will probably use uh, whatever front front end library they're using, and whether the design for those pickers or uh, components are good enough is really outside of our control. And so this is why it helps to provide any assets that you can that are custom. And it doesn't necessarily have to be custom if you're using um, components uh, from a library on Figma, um, such as Material UI, and the developers using Material UI, then there's no you know, custom there. It's just making sure that they know which one to use where. Uh, and lastly here, I want to cover overlays. Um, so when an overlay is displayed on a page, uh, that could be something that might go missing in the design uh, in terms of showcasing, you know, how do those little interactions that we might not think about in the design uh, process uh, look like. And this is like one small example that I provided here um, for new notifications to actually show up as a banner at the top of the page. So assuming I'm, I'm browsing the app and all of a sudden I got a new rental request for someone to book my Rolex Daytona, then... Um, it could look something like this. And again, I've added some annotations uh, right inside to show we want to slide the banner from the top and dismiss it automatically after four seconds. So if there's anything that requires some logic or some um, you know finer details around how you want even elements to be presented, like there's no way for me to show um, you know we want this automatically dismissed after four seconds other than outlining it here or you know in other, uh, ways um, by providing some sort of guide to developers around how we want these pieces to work, right? Um, and another one, which was up, actually up here, uh, is the categories. Like we have this categories page here, but developers might not see all the different categories, so they might not be sure how many we have here because it's going you know off in the design and there's a horizontal scroll and so on. And so that's why you want to highlight, um, you know, your um, all the categories that you might have here that's going off the screen uh, or the frame and explain, you know, how the interaction should work. This is an individual category. Clicking anywhere should take you, uh, take them to that category page filtering by this category. And inside of annotations in Figma, you can actually include things like, uh, you know, lengths, distances, like heights, widths, uh, even images, shadows, anything that might again go missing, uh, even though developers have access to those when they click an object and take a look at their colors and, um, you know, shadows and so on here. And so here we just explained, this is all the categories for hang swap. Awesome. So with that, I've actually put together a uh, sort of a 
hand off cheat sheet or checklist um, you know to follow when you're putting together designs and it's based on the things that we covered in this lightning lesson as well as uh, some additional ones that um, I'll leave it for you to uh, take a look at and it includes you know things that we went through like the field states filled empty error and loading states um, annotations for your design and where to include them and some general tips and design changes um, that you might want to um, you know show to developers like as an example I'll cover you know two here that um, if, the, if the developers are using dev mode um, there's a way for you to actually or for them to actually see changes um, that are made to a certain design using this compare changes in dev mode um, so if changes have been made over time you can see what changes have been made and what do those look like um, and so that makes it easier uh, another one is um, this playground for um, components so if you have like a something like a button um, communicate with your design with your developers that they can use um, the playground here um, and open this button in the playground and see all the different states that it can have the primary secondary different sizes whether it has an icon or not uh, this different states and so on and so they can do that right within playground and as it as it states over here this is just a view mode they're not actually changing anything in the design side of things um, and again, a lot of that comes down to the communication with your developers. Whatever method you end up using or however you end up doing things, uh, whether it's sharing your states in your component library page or wherever you're organizing your designs, um, just being consistent and communicating that with them um, is the way to go because that's the number one thing. You know, Even if you put the right things in place, but developers don't know how to use the file or where to access them, you know, that's useless. So what you want to do is make sure that you cover all the things, all those states, all those annotations, tips and tricks, and then guide developers to them, uh, whether it's through setting up calls with them or just, you know, sending a message like, hey, I've updated these pages or I've sent these pages. Leaving comments throughout your design and tagging them is another good one if you've made changes to part of your design. Um, and so definitely uh, communication is at the end of the day, one of the more more important things on how to create a smoother handoff on top of doing and following you know this checklist that I've put together. Uh, awesome. And with that, um, I do also teach a Figma Fast Track course. So if you like this lightning lesson um, and want to learn how to design you know pages like that and hand them off uh, smoother to developers, uh, as well as how to cover you know everything in terms of becoming an expert in auto layout components advanced prototyping like the one we saw um, i do have a upcoming cohort um, you know in september um, or if you can't join us for this one there's upcoming cohorts uh, you know almost every other month uh, and because you attended this workshop you also get hundred dollars off using this workshop august uh, 24 uh, link or promo code um, you can also click learn more here to access that. Uh, we have live weekly sessions and we've had, uh, you know, tons of students from companies like GitHub, Accenture, Trader Joe's join us in the past cohorts um, to really take their design, you know, from one to a hundred. Um, so even if you are a designer, you've been working in UIEX design for, you know, a couple of years, um, but still looking to really master your Figma skills and take things to the next level. Uh, I think this course will definitely help you out. Uh, so feel free to check that. Again, the, the link to the file is in the chat and the comments if you're watching this elsewhere. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the session and um, hopefully looking forward to seeing you in the uh, Figma Fast Track course. Thank you.